morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Let's pray. Okay, Father, we really thank you for this morning. Uh, thank you for this brand new day. It's amazing to come to church and corporately think about you and together praising, together worshipping you, together hearing the testimonies. Uh, Father, truly you are wonderful, you are beautiful, you are glorious and Lord we want to thank you and uh, life is so amazing with you in our lives and, and we want to thank you for that Lord and life is empty without you and it's void uh, Lord we thank you that we all could really worship together this morning think about you praise you, sing and uh, listen to your word and we need this Lord uh, Lord we ask you that you would bless the of the service uh, that you would speak to us, anoint the word uh, we commit uh, the service into your hands Lord and Lord you edify us, you build us up you speak to us through your word and worship you, thank you you are amazing, beautiful in Jesus name we pray Amen How's everyone doing? I like what uh, Kishore said, like that people like saw the love in the body in the conference, right? Yeah. And uh, he said like people gave sandwiches <laughs> and they saw love in the body. And next conference will change the way we love people. I've got a strategy for next conference. <laughs> Next conference, we'll give our seats to the people. <laughs> it shows how much we really... <laughs> We're going to have a war soon in the conference. <laughs> Message was loaded. Pastor Shabili was really amazing, and and was, every session was loaded. In my heart, I still feel the conference is there. It hasn't gone, and, and it was so edifying, and, and it was amazing, really uh, beautiful. And uh, also during the conference, I always wondered why uh, during the conference, especially the this row, second and third seats. And this row, second and third, third, third rows. Normally I packed every conference, like no? I usually sit behind, but this time I chose to sit here. <laughs> and I always found this front row is always like packed, no? You can't book them, how early you come. And I found out the mystery. <laughs> found out the mystery is like, like there's a mini canteen going on out <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's spiritual food from the states. <laughs> and post the message that there's, there's physical food for the body. <laughs> 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 <It's a myth. laughs> body life. <laughs> wow, okay. This morning I have a message on, on meditating on the sufficiency of the work of Christ. No, and uh, we all know what Christ did for us and uh, the greatest miracle that Christ did for us yes he healed many people uh, there was physical healings there was deliverance from demons and we know the stories of what Christ did uh, but the greatest work that God did for mankind is he delivered us from the penalty of sin. Isn't that amazing? On the cross, uh, Christ 
delivered us from our sins no and uh, when we after some times in heaven we may forget all the miracles that jesus did the healing of the bodies uh, the the driving of the demons in heaven but we will never forget what christ did for us isn't it amazing like we will see his hands that have been pierced forever and ever because we will see the marks forever in eternity and the message will be there ringing in our hearts and our minds forever isn't that amazing isn't that amazing yes. okay. i'm going to put the mic <laughs> okay but <clears throat> look at this there is this uh, mental institution uh, where people who are mentally uh, ill go to this institution there's a mental institution in scotland and the head of the institution once came i read this somewhere that, that he once the head of the mental institution in scotland he came publicly on bbc radio and he said this that if only the people in this institution only knew or only had the assurance that they are forgiven he said 50% of my patients would be released the very moment they had the assurance of of forgiveness that's like people in a mental institution head of the department telling if only my people these people here only knew that they had the assurance of forgiveness they they would be they could be discharged they be ordinary people and could go back to the society and live like a normal person is not amazing like he says that most often mental problems are directly linked to guilt and people have no assurance of forgiveness and and therefore they get into the cycle of mental uh, problems and, and they go in and 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 suffer this mental breakdowns in their life and that's a amazing thing to to hear from this man the head of the department saying that and it's amazing guilt is a guilt is a serious problem it's heavy a person with guilt is heavy a person with guilt is tiring guilt makes us groan but amazing it's it's beautiful that in christ we don't have to live in guilt amen amen in christ i don't have to go through the mental problems that people go through in christ if a person has believed jesus as his personal savior if a person has trusted christ as his personal savior and when he sins he doesn't have to live in his guilt no a christian has to do the following he accepts responsibility for his guilt he confesses his guilt he receives forgiveness from christ and the guilt is erased isn't that amazing you accept responsibility we accept responsibility and then we confess the guilt and we receive forgiveness and and guilt is erased god never wants his people to carry or live in guilt no, he doesn't want us to carry the burden of guilt no guilt is not a burden that god wants us to carry no a believer does not have to be handcuffed by guilt a believer does not have to live in his past he does not have to live in his in his failures in his regrets but he can be delivered from uh, guilt that's why you see many people and this is like such a important teaching because it's easy for us to accept this truth doctrinally but to really appropriate in our lives is not that easy yes it's not easy because even god can forgive us sometimes we cannot forgive us that's why we read in many books of stories where people carry guilt for 30 years 40 years and 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 they are not able to be productive for god because the guilt is not being released when even god forgives us sins we carry those guilts and and therefore we are handcuffed by guilt and it's easy for us to know it doctrinally biblically but god wants us to appropriate these truths in our lives it's an amazing thing that 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 god like forgave my sins it's it's like we meditate on what christ did for us he is glorious and 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 we will forget the miracles but we should never forget what christ did for us on the cross it is finished 
no he's delivered us from the penalty of sin no and 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 let's go back to what happened in the garden of eden everybody remembers what happened in the garden of eden adam and eve right adam and eve were there in the garden and 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 what were they doing they were worshiping god they were praising god uh, they were they were loving god loving god's word and 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 there were certain activities that adam and eve were doing they were just doing like us like we are meeting together we are praying together we are attending conferences together these are activities that that a child of god does like we are doing things together we are witnessing we are loving god we are praising god and 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 this is amazing these are the activities adam and eve were doing in the garden but who didn't like those activities satan didn't really like those activities he is opposing those activities he wasn't happy to see adam and eve worshiping god and giving all glory to god no and and he came after god's people he does today the devil comes after god's people he comes after god's children he hates what we do he, he comes after god's work and he's pursuing us i don't know if you've seen animal program like i watch that often and and you see these wild dogs they go in groups and and they in the target uh, a victim and they go after like they chase they chase they chase and sometimes devil is like that he's he's like chasing us and his objective is to harm us he is a liar he is a murderer he is a destroyer he comes to harm us you no know? and that's what happened in the garden for the first time Adam and Eve were seeing the powers of darkness really work, and and we we've read now we have a lot of knowledge about Satan. We have books to know. We've seen many lives, but but for Adam and Eve, it was a first glimpse of the darkness of evil penetrating into the garden and and trying to show the darker side uh, of what they experienced on the other side of light. You know, and they've been chased by Satan. He was after them. he was persistent he was deceptive he was lying he was downloading lies to them planned all the strategy and then ensured that they disobeyed god and sinned god and look look at that after adam and eve said what did he do he left them with fear of facing god they couldn't face god because there was fear in them there was guilt there was shame and it's amazing the thoughts of adam and eve like after they sin after they were like hit by satan in into disobedience like you can imagine how guilty they were like feeling like god was there but they couldn't face god because uh, they were meditating on what happened they were meditating on what the satan did to them and 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 they said like oh we have sinned oh we have failed oh we are guilty oh heart is desperately wicked and they also understood how frail and weak they are outside of god and, and they could so easily fall into the traps of evil one who oh, we have sinned and thoughts like loaded them with guilt and and, and in, in one sense i think the first mental institute could have begun in the garden if there was no provision in christ right and the devil comes like those the wild dogs coming and he achieved what he wanted from adam and eve and they sinned No, their hearts were wicked. They found out they messed. You know what? When Satan deceived and made Adam and Eve disobey, what did he do? He then he first achieved them to fall. The next thing he did was what did he do? He mocked them. He ridiculed them. Uh, he enjoyed the fun of making God's people disobey. God. The Bible says in Revelation 12 verse 10 is the accuser of the brethren, right? He accuses us day and night. Did you know his profile? Okay, his profile is day and night. He's busy. He's busy accusing the brothers and sisters in Christ day and night. He's got a full-time job, 24 by 7, busy schedule, and his only agenda is condemning us. look at your people look at your people look at your people and is condemning us and is filling our minds with thoughts of condemnation and 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 to paralyze a christian totally becoming uh, uh ineffective for christ that's what he did to adam adam and eve for the first time 
experiencing the glimpses of what Satan could do in their life. No, even Job was was condemned by Satan. Oh, look at your look at your servant Job. He is godly because he's got some wrong motives. He was accusing even Job day and night. No, sad story. What happened in Adam, uh, in the Garden of Eden? Was it not sad? Was it not real? But thank God the story doesn't end there. No, then there came another person chasing after Adam and Eve. Who was that? God came chasing after Adam and Eve. No, he came chasing after them. The story doesn't end there. While Adam is in fear, while Adam is in shame, while Adam is in guilt, like God came chasing. Thank God he came chasing for another reason. And for a good reason. And he came with the provision. I like that. Like God also came. Satan also came. And today God is working. Satan is working. God is covering us. Satan is condemning us. He's, 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 he's dragging us. He's filling our thoughts with condemnation. But God is covering us. He's got the provision for us. There's another man who came in the garden. That was God. And, and what did God say? Adam. Adam, where are you? No? He said, Adam, Adam, where are you? Now, why did he miss out Eve? <laughs> why did he miss out? Now, theologically, we all say, okay, Adam is the head of the home, head of the human race. No? And, and, and we don't want to, that's one side of theological understanding. But I believe, like, Adam and Eve were so close prior to the fall, because when God was even speaking to Adam and searching for him, though God knew in his omniscience, he was still operating as if Adam and Eve has not sinned. And I believe that Adam, Adam, where are you? Because he was so close that if you found where Adam was, you know he would be very next to him. Like you know, there was there was such intimacy. And and, and this is my interpretation, okay? You know, there's such inter uh, like intimacy. Like you don't have to find where he, Eve is, like like Adam. You found Adam, you could find where Eve is. And in that understanding, he said, Adam, Adam, where are you? And we can have that today also. In the power of the Holy Spirit, we can have that intimacy. When both of us are filled with the Holy Spirit, we can have that intimacy that was there. And, and, and it's amazing, like Adam, Adam, where are you? And here comes Adam. No? And, and he faces God. And the same thing, God comes not to condemn us. He convicts us of our sin. And then God says, Adam, accept your responsibility. Confess your guilt and receive my forgiveness. I, I thank God like, because God came with another purpose. He came with a provision. He came with redemption. He came with the blood of Christ. And he said, Adam, I don't want you to live in guilt. You don't have to. I know what Satan did to you. You don't have to meditate on your failure. You don't have to meditate on your sin. You don't have to dwell on it and ruin your life, your present and your future. I know what Satan wants to do. He wants you to handcuff you with guilt and ruin the rest of your life when you can still be a potential wonderful servant of mine. And I come here with a, with a provision for you. I love you. I care for you. Don't meditate in what Satan did. I've got a greater plan for you. I've got the provision for you. And here comes God with the provision. He comes and, and he exposes man's sin, but he also exposes it with the provision that is available in Jesus Christ. And he comes to liberate man from the mess that he, that he committed. That I don't have to meditate on that. I can meditate on the provision that God, God has for me. Like we don't have to meditate. Thank God. We, I don't know if we didn't have this provision of Christ. If we didn't have that work of Christ, I don't know how many of us would be like, uh, how, many of, how many Christians could have gone into mental problems like, like people in the world who have no hope. And Paul said, do not weep like those who have no hope because we have hope. We have a God who is also coming and saying, you don't have to meditate on what the devil does. We meditate on what Christ is, does for us and did for us and we lean on that provision that is given to us, right? We meditate on the sufficiency of the work of Christ that has happened on the cross to liberate us. What is the work of Christ? Let's meditate on it. What is the work of Christ? What did Christ do for us? Yes, 
He died for my sins. I've been delivered from the penalty of sin. But in a deeper way, what does that work mean? Does that work mean everything for me? Do I have all the provisions that is needed for me on the cross that Christ did for me? So let's meditate. Christ's sacrifice included that Christ paid for all my sins. His sacrifice says that Christ paid for all my sins. That means Christ paid for your past sins, your present sins, your future sins. Isn't that amazing? Christ is not surprised when you trip and fall. Christ is not saying, oh, how did you do that? No, even before you believed Christ, Christ 2000 years ago died for you, all your sins were future and in you. Not that you want, he wants you to live in sin or live outside of his fellowship with him. But all he's saying is, I'm not surprised. All he's saying is, my provision is available for you. No, you don't have to be handcuffed by guilt and, and, and in sorrow and, and, and have, a, have a countenance of groaning. But you can come to me because I paid for all your sins. Right? First John 2, 2 says, He is the propitiation for my sins, not for my sins only, for the entire sins of the whole world. The word propitiation means God was satisfied. Whatever Christ did, God was satisfied. He himself is the propitiation. Like for all my sins, Christ paid for my sins. And God is saying, I'm satisfied. This is more than sufficient. And you don't have to have live in guilt or carry guilt for 30, 40 years. No? I had a very close family. Person called me last week, uh, uh, and 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 he was really in tears. Can you can imagine how people can really go through problems in life, and uh, and he was in tears, like a believer, but but really carrying guilt in his life, you no, know? and was not able to go get over the 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 burden of guilt, you no, know? and. Uh, and I was talking to this person, very close family friend, and he loves the Lord, and he's a wonderful believer, but he's not able to overcome the guilt because he doesn't have the teaching that we have today, that Christ can take you a step further from guilt and can release you. You don't have to be handcuffed. You don't have to become an inoperative Christian. You can still be used by God in a greater way and you can still be received a well done my good and faithful servant at the Bema Seat Judgment. Right? Isn't that amazing? And based on that call I said like let me study on this subject. Like guilt is amazing that God is satisfied. In Him we have redemption through His blood and forgiveness of sins. And, 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 and this propitiation God is satisfied in our uh, in, in Christ and by sacrifice, Christ is satisfied. First John 1 John 1.7 says, The blood of Christ cleanses me of, of what sins? Of all sins, past, present. It cleanses me. And sometimes we people can even go to God and say, uh, Father, I'm back again with the same sin, lying, or whatever it is. I'm back again. Lord, I come to the same sin of lying yesterday. And God says, what sin? Because the sins confess, the Father chooses not to remember. He chooses in His omniscience not to remember. Isn't that amazing? Where do we have this message outside of Christ? Where do many churches teach this message? I like Pastor Shebley, the, the main uh, core of greater grace is finished work and grace right and god loves this god loves this this message because it's so talked less today because it's so difficult to appropriate this in our personal lives and to see each other in grace and finished work right because it's so easy to see each other in in, a, in flesh no and to see each other in past sins and we go to god and say it's like God, I come to the same sin again. I'm coming before you. And God says, what sin? Right? And that's the way we see each other. We don't see each other in our yesterdays and, and past 
failures. One time somebody asked Billy Graham, Billy Graham, I have a question for you. What would, if, if, if Hitler on his deathbed would accept Christ and believe upon you, would he be in heaven? And what if another person was a religious person, good person, but does not believe in Jesus and dies? Where would he go? And Billy Graham said, it's a tricky question. Billy Graham said, I understand. No, the religious man might be good, but if he's rejected Christ, he will not be in heaven. And then Billy Graham said, Hitler might have committed the worst sin on the face of this earth. But if he is repented and received Christ as his saviour, he will be in heaven. Isn't that amazing? Like no matter, imagine the worst possible sin anybody committed. And what do we say? The blood of Christ cleanses you from all your sins. Hitler, you could be in heaven if you had really... Isn't that amazing? Like, like Billy Graham said, yes, Hitler. Because, because God is not seeing Hitler outside of Christ. If God saw only Hitler and his sins, he could never be accepted. But God saw Hitler in Christ. God loved Christ so much and he was so satisfied by the sacrifice. God could love Hitler and accept him through the blood that Christ shed. Isn't that amazing? Based on the love and the acceptance the father had for the son, Hitler could be uh, could be accepted and he could be taken to heaven. What a question. In, and, and we are all accepted in the beloved. Like, I am accepted in the beloved. In Christ, I am accepted. And that's a beautiful thing that because, uh, thank God, because we are all accepted in Christ and, and, and God loves that because God loves that because because he says, I accept you. I accept the worst sin in you. Not because of you or your sin. Because judicially, legally, my son paid for you. And it said, it is finished. The word it is finished is tetelestai in the Greek. And whenever you have to pay your bills, and when you pay your amount, in the Greek times, they would put a word tetelestai, which means pay in full. In English, you would translate, it says pay in full. I like that. It's not just paid. It's not just paid in part. It's not paid in paid in installments. It's not paid in advance. The remaining payment later. No, it just says paid in full. Like Christ paid for all my sins and in full. I don't have to do anything to 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 really do anything to be accepted by God. I'm accepted in the beloved based on what Christ did for me. This is the thing that we meditate on. This is the thing that helps us to really uh, keep our focus on eyes, look to Christ and, and my Savior and run the race. We don't dwell on our past. We don't dwell on our regrets. We don't dwell on our inadequacies. But we look to Him and we say, Lord, this is what it is. I don't want to fill my thoughts with because Adam and Eve had to move away from what Satan did to them in the garden and to live in the provision and the identity they had in Christ and move forward in God's plan. They didn't have to dwell into the cycle of what Christ, uh, Satan did for them. They had to move on. That's what God says. It's not that, like when we meditate on this, our lives are changed. Uh, when we meditate on, on what Christ for, did for us, uh, it's amazing. We are being changed into His likeness. And, and there's a transformation in us, like, God, your sufficiency, your grace is amazing. And it's amazing. When, like when we meditate on this, we are saying, we are saying that God pray, paid for all my sins. Second thing is, God cannot punish His children. Okay? God cannot punish His children. Don't ever say that God is punishing you. God never punishes His children. God disciplines us, but never punishes us. Because God's punishment fell on Jesus Christ. All the wrath of God, anger of God over sin of the human race fell upon Jesus Christ. God will never punish us. He only disciplines us. And it's good sometimes God disciplines us. It's for our good. You know? And then it says, God, what did God do on the cross? He paid for all my sins. God never dis punishes me. He disciplines me. But I like this. God's 
also blotted my sins out. I like this, Isaiah 44, verse 22, it says, I have blotted out like a thick cloud your transgressions, and like a cloud your sins. Return to me, for I have redeemed you. I love this, I have blotted out, which means like a thick cloud your transgressions, and like a cloud your sins. Return to me, for I have redeemed you. Psalm 103, 12 says, As far as the east is from the west, for he has removed our transgressions from us. I love this. Like God says, I have blotted it out. Which means, I choose not to remember the sins that you committed. Come. Come and enjoy fellowship with me. I blot out, I cast out your sins as far as is the east from the west. No? And that's amazing. We, we don't even talk about somebody's sin that's been confessed. Because who are we to talk about somebody's sin? When God chooses not to remember, when God chooses to blot out, are we bigger than God? No? And, and that's amazing. Right? And, and also important is to know that I am accepted by God based on the blood of Christ. It's the blood the basis for my acceptance. You remember Exodus 12 when the Jews were leaving out of Egypt. What happened? God told them just apply the blood over your doorpost. Right? Apply the blood. And the angel of Jehovah would come to each house. And each house, if there is blood, I love that word. The angel of Jehovah passed by. No, no judgment. No plague hit them. I love that. Like the blood of Christ is there. I am not touched. I like that. When the blood of Christ is there, I cannot touch that house. For some, some of us, some people might say, no, let the angel of Jehovah come. I'm going to put a notice there outside my door. No blood. And the notice says, I read the Bible for three hours today. Please pass away the angel. I say, no, I'm going to touch you with the judgment. Some say, I'm going to pray for three hours. No. Do you have the blood on the door close? I like that. When the angel of Jehovah saw the blood, he passed by. That's what we are. We accept it in the blood because the Father sees the blood. And we, have, we are accepted in Him. My acceptance never changes. Now, even Christians that live in guilt, and to the person I spoke last week, and, and it's so easy for us to say that you are accepted in the beloved. You didn't lose your acceptance. You don't have to live in guilt. Even while you live in guilt, God's acceptance has not changed for you. You've only broken your fellowship. You repent and come back to the Father. Your acceptance is always on the basis of the blood. You have not lost your sonship. You've only lost your fellowship. Isn't it amazing? How righteous are we? What is the requirement to go to heaven? We have to be as righteous as God is. As holy as God is. And nothing changed. God has not changed His demands. How righteous are we? We have to be as righteous as God is. When we believe Jesus Christ, Christ not only forgave our sins, but He also gave His righteousness credited to us. And when God sees us, He sees us in Christ, not outside of Christ. Even in the worst day when I feel not as holy, God says, I don't see any unholiness in you. You are perfect in Christ. I see the righteousness of Christ in you. I see the garment of righteousness uh, positional righteousness of garment on you. I've never seen you imperfect. Isn't that amazing? Lord, I didn't pray today. I feel in the unholy. And God says, no, I, I, I have see you, seen you perfect always. And sometimes we, uh, days, sometimes we really pray. We feel little holy, you know, and then we become self-righteous. And then we walk in the church and, and we know like, hey, how are you doing? Like, <laughs> and, and God says, no, in your high moments and the down moments, righteous, you are accepted in the beloved. I like that. But but I'm always accepted. I, but if I'm accepted, why should I confess my sins? Because if I do not confess, I lose my fellowship with God. I do not lose my sonship. In order to restore my fellowship, I need to rebound and, and confess my sins and admit my, 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 my troubles to God. 
and my sins to God. And God says, confession is agreeing with God. Confession is not begging God. Confession is not pleading with God. It's just saying, yes, Lord, I've done it and pouring my heart before God. And I'm not pleading, I'm not begging. I'm just agreeing with God and saying, yes, Lord. And God says, forgive it, forgotten. And I've restored you back to fellowship. I love you. I care for you. I have a plan for you. And I don't have to live in my regrets and my past and failure. God still has a plan for me. God can still use me in whatever capacity God has for me. But, but judicially, officially from heaven's throne, I have a clean shit as a believer when I confess my sins and I can move on in God. And, and I can even hear a well done, my good and faithful servant in heaven. Isn't it amazing? And, and, and we, we forgive ourselves. Sometimes guilt people are people like, uh, like they don't forgive themselves. Like we have to forgive ourselves. It's, e it's easy to, to get A grade in our Bible college exams. But to really apply those truths when we're really going through it, it's like the challenge, you know. Devil loves to give us A grades. He has no problem theologically making us smart. But it's... It's 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 in the applied Bible doctrine. I love that ABD, you know, and Pastor Stephen's message is like applying the doctrines is where Satan doesn't want us to apply. You no, know, it's easy to live in guilt. We forgive ourselves. We don't dwell on what people say. We don't dwell on the negatives of what the demonic forces give us. You no, know? John Newton somebody said committed the mo most possible sin on the face of this earth. No, there is no sin that he committed. Worst possible sins was committed by John Newton. But today we sing his songs that he's written, right? And we say, "Amazing grace, how sweet the sound." He understood it. That saved a wretched like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. Isn't that amazing? We sing those songs, but I like it. He appropriated those truths into his life. C.S. Lewis in his screw tape letters, he said, one of the things Satan loves to do with Christ Christians is that like when they fall, when they fail, he wants to get Christians to be preoccupied with their failures and past. And from then on, the battle is won for Satan. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. The battle is won for Satan because he wants us to be preoccupied with my past, my, my failures, and even brings them into projections from then on. The battle is won. You know what Satan does? Satan takes my past, he takes my sin, he takes my sin and, and he goes deep into the sins that I have confessed, that I have got right with God, sins that are covered under the blood, sins that are forgiven and forgotten by God. He digs them up and goes to God and throws it on the face of God and says, Your servant see, your servant see, accuses the brethren. Day and night, day and night, he, he makes, the first thing he makes us to disobey God and then use the very disobedient sin that we committed and take that sin and throw it at God as an ammunition to attack us and that's what he does. But God takes, never uses, when we confess our sin, God chooses not to remember, though he is omniscient, he never uses my sins as an ammunition to attack me. He covers me. Isn't that amazing? He covers my sins. You know, and, and, and Satan uses that as an ammunition to me. God never uses my past sins as an ammunition to attack me. I love this. Did you like the topic? Yes. Like we meditate on this. On the sufficiency of the work of Christ. What do you do when you meditate on the sufficiency of the work of Christ? We are lifting up Christ. Because all that I spoke for the last 30 minutes, it's not about us. Yes? It's about Christ and the work He did for us. When I meditate on the work of Christ, what do I do? I am lifting up Christ, high and exalted. Christ is lifted up. If I want to say a few words about somebody, what do I do? I put a list of good works they have done. Right? I am lifting up. When I talk about the cross, I think last 30 minutes, I never spoke about any man's righteousness. Because it's all filthy rags. There's nothing much to talk about. No? But we spoke about the work of Christ. The sufficiency of the work of Christ. And who's lifted up? 
Christ is lifted up. He is lifted up high and exalted. And the Bible says when Christ is lifted up in a church, in a person's life, or, or, or in, in, in our teachings when Christ is lifted up, the Bible says, what does the Bible say? He draws all men unto him. I think, uh, I think some people use it only for unbelievers. You know, how much even believers need this message? It doesn't say all unbelievers. It says all men. Those depressed. Those going through trauma. Those going through agony. Those going through worry. Those going through guilt. He draws them. Christ is lifted up. And he draws all men unto us. Yesterday night we were at the outreach. A team of us, six people, we were at the outreach. It's amazing. Uh, as I was pondering this message, it is also amazing to see, like we are talking the same message that I spoke this morning to people uh, on the streets, you know, that, that we have a message. And it's amazing. For a moment I just stood there and uh, we, were, we were doing a Dicer Station Skywalk and, uh, and we were doing it. And for a moment I said, like, what a message we have. And then I looked at the faces of the people. I'm closing in two minutes, but I'm looking at the faces of the people. Uh, it's, they are so tired. They are so worn out. Life has its troubles. You know? There is worry. There is burden. People have so much of, of trouble in life. And it's a reality. I saw one lady uh, really uh, bringing two children from tuition, the routines of life. And she's really like, you can see her, she's, she's like tired, exhausted, worn out with the routine details of life. You know? And then I've seen another man uh, who's, who's like just had a baby, like you know, just transition, just had a baby and just came out of the house because uh, the noise of the baby was so much, he's going through a transition. And he just wanted to come out uh, for fresh air and to just come to the open sky and take a break. And there we met him and, and, and we gave him the gospel. But isn't that amazing? Like, we have this message not only on the pulpit, but it's passed on to the streets to the very So Come to me all that who are heavy laden. There are people heavy laden. And those faces, we spoke to many people, those 200 tracks have gone yesterday evening and we spoke to people, and people were heavy laden. And I was moved by the anxieties of people. I wish this, this message could penetrate into their lives. And Justin and Anju were there. Justin had a bad evening yesterday. He, he got stuck to two people. He had a tough outreach. <laughs> And uh, he got stuck all one hour to two people. One was an atheist, one, one was a depressed person. <laughs> Sometimes it could get challenging. Okay? <laughs> Father, we thank you, Lord, praise you, worship you. So, so amazing to think about the sufficiency of the work of Christ. You are lifted up. I am lifted up. And, and we thank you, Lord. Thank you, worship you, bless you. Lord, with every head bowed, every high closed. Uh, if you are here for the first time, if you have uh, been here before, and if you would like to accept Christ as a personal Savior, we just heard the message this morning that Christ died for all our sins. Uh, the Bible says we are all sinners and destined to die and be separated from God. Uh, and, and God doesn't want that separation. He loves us and He wants to be in union with Him one day. And if you are here this morning, every head bowed, every eye closed. And if you would like to accept Christ as your personal Savior, just repeat this prayer with me in your own heart. Uh, just say, Father, in your heart, just say this prayer. Father, I thank you for sending Jesus. Uh, I repent of my sins. I admit I am a sinner. I admit I cannot save myself. I admit all my righteousnesses like filthy rags. I receive Christ as my personal Savior. I repent of my sins and I believe in Jesus alone to secure my soul in heaven. I say this prayer in Jesus' name. With every hand bowed and every eye closed. If you said that prayer here, just raise your hand for a minute. If you said that prayer. No. And we heard this morning. Thank you for one hand. And... Uh, 
and if you said that prayer just just raise your hand for a minute and uh, lord we thank you thank you for those hands uh, bless you lord bless us today and uh, give us a great evening bless all our services across the city in jesus name